Yeah, so uh, like I said, it was probably around 2014. And during that time, I didn't really have the, um, the, the really the foresight of like, oh, I need to probably sit down and talk to every single patient face to face. Uh, the way that I did with all of my Delta patients, but going back to 2014, every time that something would come up to be recredentialed, I was like, no, I'm just not going to do it. <laughs> I just, I just decided I wasn't going to recredential with them anymore and just dropped it by default. And I don't recommend doing it that way because it kind of caught a lot of people off guard and understandably. So uh, that's just when I got pretty much, that was, I would say my pre breaking point, my breaking point came right after we were shut down during COVID. Um, and it was more of just kind of like a, I have this desire to be independent, not being told what I can and cannot charge, what, what I can and cannot treat. I mean, that's, why you, covered, that, that's not covered. That's why you wanted to own your own practice. I mean, to exactly. be, you wanted to be the quarterback, you wanted to be the captain of your ship. And now exactly. if you're in network, you don't get to decide your fees. I mean, how crazy is that? Exactly. And I don't want some nameless, faceless person or entity telling me, you know, how I need to treat my patients. So, uh, you know, I was very, very focused on maintaining a high level of care. And it all comes down to, you know, clinical excellence, always getting better, continuing education, learning new techniques, getting new technology, figuring out the best way to communicate to my team, how to lead them, how to have them talk to our patients. Yeah. Um, the, the first impression on the phone, all of that stuff. It's very hard to do when all you're focused on is running as fast as you possibly can. When you're the hamster your on the wheel, uh, when yes. you're the hamster on the wheel, it's kind of hard. Now, as we started working together, uh, as I got to know your practice, one of the things that was really clear to me, and of course I said to you, I said, Dan, you're in a really good position to do this because you give your patients and the community many, many, many reasons to come to you for their care. Many reasons. Right. Uh, right. technology, uh, a really compassionate, caring team, um, you know, and I could go on and on and on. But I, I said, when I look at a practice uh, in their preparedness for this, uh, I, I look at, hey, are we giving um, the patients and the community a reason to come to you? And, and there were just so many reasons screaming at me about your practice that you're poised really well for this. And I remember telling you, I still want to do all the prep so that we can keep as many of your existing net patients in network patients as possible. But you're poised very well to do this because of all the advantages that your office provides people from Boulder that uh, choose your office for their care. Right. And, you know, like you said in the beginning, I mean, literally they can choose anyone. I mean, we have, we have tons of dentists in town and I know most of them. I mean, I, I I'm friends with a lot of them and yeah. You and know, most of them, like like every community, most of them are PPO providers. Right. Now and it's changing. That's changing. It's starting to change. And yeah. they're starting to, to realize that in order to maintain that same level of care that they have in the past. Yeah. Going forward, it's it's getting nearly impossible to maintain that that amount of time you spend with your patients, the best materials, uh, the technology, everything that goes into being a better dentist uh, in 2022 you can't use the same formula from 2000. I mean, no. it doesn't work. Well, and, and those so. fees are not going up. In fact, the PPO no. fees are actually going down, right. which is crazy in the, in the, you know, in this situation we're in today with double digit percentage inflation, you're actually right. getting lower fees, you know, from right. PPO plans. How in the world does that make any sense? Well, Delta of Colorado just rolled out their fee increase uh, for this for July 1st, uh, which is coming up here in week or right. so. And, you know, I did some quick math, put, put a spreadsheet together and posted a picture of it on a couple of our Facebook groups. I mean, you're literally looking at 5%, 6%. I mean, it's, but you're not accounting for the previous 10 years where the fees have not changed whatsoever. So that's really five, five or 6%, uh, but that's over a 10 plus year period of time. That's my point. And so, but they're not even, but, and then you've got to add in the eight to 12% because depending on what source you're pulling from, we're either 8% inflation over the past six, eight months, or we're at 12%. Yeah. The mountain States have been hit harder according to some reports. And um, so what I say is, Hey, you're still making less money than you did last year. And it's smoke and mirrors. It's not real. It's not a real increase. It's not a real cost of living adjustment forget about that it's like i mean you're still having to they're, they're throwing you schedules crumbs. and 
you throw on his crumbs and it's like, you've got to, you've got to speed through things, triple book, double book, uh, accelerated hygiene, hurry, hurry, hurry. And it's like, that's not how we do it. That's not how I want to do it. And they commoditize your, your services. Like Dan, you and everybody's the same. A crown's a crown's a crown, right? Right. No such thing. No such thing. And they, but it's a race to the bottom. It is. Um, And it's anti-competitive. It's, you know, we, we talk about like, you know, Dennis can't sit and talk about things together. Well, I get that. But when you're in network, it's literally locking everybody into it's the definition of price fixing. It's it's a commodity. And They're commoditizing what you it's do. It's exactly what it is. And we're sitting here going, well, we all know it's not the same. We're the ones actually doing the work. And we're the ones actually treating our patients. We're the ones that agonize and stay up late and think about all the things that we have to do to make our practice function properly, to treat people the best way possible and to have the best clinical outcome. And then that doesn't work when all you're focused on is having to, uh, you know, deal with this behemoth that is funneling as much money to itself and away from the actual patient care. Uh, It it doesn't work. Don't get me started. uh, Don't get me started on how in the world Delta can be considered a nonprofit. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's the biggest. Uh, That's (laughs) the biggest scam on the planet. Right. Um, and I know the ADA has a lawsuit against them, but we're just sitting and waiting, trying yeah, to figure out where uh, that is. So, you know, Dan, I remember that when I did my debrief with you after after you had been out of, of network and we uh, let a few months go by so we could, uh, you know, kind of look at things analytically. And I remember two things about that meeting. I remember it vividly. Um, two things that you told me. Um, and I'd like you to comment on this. First thing, when we looked at um, how many what percent of your in-network patients did you lose? I remember you telling me, Gary, I lost fewer patients than I thought. Right. I lost some, but I lost, it was much fewer than I thought. That's one thing I remember. The other thing I remember about it, when I asked you, I said, Dan, do you have any regrets? And you said, this is a quote. You said, the only regret I have is that I didn't do it sooner. 